Nikki Sixx has gotten a reputation for being a prima donna over the years, with many of his rock and roll colleagues engaging in highly publicized feuds with the Motley Crue bassist. Here are just some of the rockers who can't stand Nikki Sixx. Godsmack frontman Sully Erna and Motley Crue bassist Nikki Sixx would butt heads during the 2009 Crue Fest tour, with many fans speculating that Godsmack's 2010 song, Crying Like a B was written about the Motley Crue bassist himself. For many years, Erna was reluctant to say specifically who this song was about, stating that, quote, the song was more about just being fed up with prima donnas and certain rock stars in the industry that still felt they can push people around and are still relevant even though it's been about 20 years since they've had their big moment. Half a decade later, Erna finally broke his silence, lashing out against Six during an interview on the JASTA podcast. I'll say it straight out, confessed Erna. I've never met a bigger effing expletive in my life than Nikki Six, And I don't give an F what he says. He knows exactly where I am, and he knows exactly how he can find me anytime that mother effer has the balls to come look me up. Six offered a brief response, simply calling Erna a quote, poor baby during a Q&A with fans. A feud would erupt between Motley Crue and Lars Ulrich of Metallica when Ulrich exposed the crew for performing with a backing track at the 1997 American Music Awards. Motley Crue bassist Nikki Sixx responded with an open letter to the Metallica drummer which read, Dear sweet fat balding Lars, taking your ever moronic soapbox position on a subject that's none of your business has made you out to be an a-hole as usual. Metallica and the crew have still not made amends all of these years later as evidenced by Tommy Lee's relatively recent post roasting Ulrich, sharing a photo of his face under the caption, straight out of tempo. Eddie Vedder, lead singer of Pearl Jam, would absolutely blast Motley Crue in a January 2022 interview with the New York Times, saying, I despised Motley Crue. I hate it. I hated how it made the fellas look. It did not take long for Motley Crue's Nikki Six to fire back, comparing Vedder's vocal technique to singing with, quote, marbles in your mouth. It made me laugh today reading how much the singer in Pearl Jam hated Motley Crue, said Six. Now considering that they're one of the most boring bands in history, it's kind of a compliment, isn't it? Soon after, Vedder would ridicule Motley Crue during one of his solo band performances, stating that, unlike Motley Crue, his drummer Chad Smith did not need a special elevated rotating drum kit to do his job. When reflecting on the feud a couple of months later, Six would point out that he considers Vedder to be disingenuous, saying, Let's face it, the guy flies around in private jets. He lives in a mansion in a gated community. He sells out stadiums, and then he dresses at the thrift store and tries to pretend he's some guy in the 90s. Steel Panther is a comedic glam metal band known for their exaggerated onstage theatrics that pay tribute to bands like Motley Crue. Steel Panther drummer Styx Zidinia revealed that his band felt rather unwelcome during their 2011 tour with the crew. Tommy Lee and Nikki Six did not like it when we went on tour with them, said Styx. I think they thought we were actually making fun of them directly, and I just gotta chalk that up to their egos being too big. Then in a 2019 interview, Steel Panther lead singer Michael Starr would joke about how the Vince Neil of today is a far cry from who he was in his prime. Six was enraged by these comments, taking to Twitter to say, The singer in Steel Panther can go F himself. Wanna be banned putting down Vince Neil? They are a-holes, backstabbers. Steel Panther would respond by posting a clip where Six himself would put down Vince Neil in a Karabi era interview referring to Neil as, quote, 300 pounds of blubber. When asked about how they feel about Motley Crue these days, Steel Panther guitarist Satchel would reply, I still love Motley Crue, even though I think Nikki Six is an expletive. These things are not mutually exclusive. In May of 2016, Gene Simmons received backlash from fans and Motley Crue bassist Nikki Six after insinuating that musical icon Prince died of a drug overdose. Six blasted the Kiss bassist, saying that Simmons was heartless and no longer his hero. We have no respect for Gene Simmons anymore. Nobody in rock does, said Nikki. I think that Gene should just call it a day. Simmons later apologized for his remarks about Prince, stating that he had a very emotional reaction due to what he's seen drugs do to the families of addicts. But that did nothing to placate Six, who would only continue his tirade on his radio show, calling Simmons an overrated lucky guy that dresses like a clown. Less than a month later, a press release from the Midwest Medical Examiner's Office stated that Prince had died of an accidental overdose of fentanyl.
Motley Crue's second lead singer, John Karabi, joined the band in 1992 when Vince Neil was dismissed due to personal differences. Motley Crue went on to release one album with Karabi, 1994's self-titled Motley Crue, which ended up being a commercial failure in the wake of grunge's rising popularity. When reflecting on the album in a 2016 interview, Six was rather blunt regarding his feelings on Karabi's writing ability. I think it was a very unfocused record, remember Six? It was painful for me, because John Karabi can't write lyrics. He was a nice enough guy, but he just didn't have that fire. When he was asked to comment on Six's remarks, John Karabi would express confusion as to why Nicky would make these comments more than two decades after the Crew LP was released. Karabi later said that he was disappointed when Nicky Six gave him no response when Karabi reached out to his former bandmates seeking guidance about his son's drug addiction. I got nothing from Nicky at all. No response, shared John. I'm done with those guys. I won't ever bother them again. I won't ever call them again. I won't forget it. I will never forget the fact that I asked what I thought were my friends to help me out. Former Skid Row frontman Sebastian Bach would claim that he was asked to replace Vince Neil in Motley Crue when Neil was fired from the band in 1992. Nikki Six would quickly dispute these claims, saying they were absolutely not true. Bach would then post a lengthy statement to his official Facebook page, reading, It's not every day you wake up to one of your childhood heroes calling you a liar. The fact of the matter is that I was asked to join Motley Crue. It was a big deal involving record companies, management companies, and all sorts of business dealings. Sebastian then plugged his upcoming book, telling fans that they could read the full story when his autobiography arrived on bookshelves. In response, Nikki would tweet, Someone needs attention to try and sell some books. Nikki Six would engage in a rather one-sided feud with Poison frontman Brett Michaels, with Six repeatedly talking trash about Brett's band. In a 2004 post, the Motley Crue bassist would say that there was, quote, no effing way in hell that he would ever tour with a band like Poison. We have had talks with Kiss, and I told them very clearly that we would not do the tour if they used Poison, remarked Nikki. That would be the death of us. I will not be attached to that kind of fake BS. There are followers and leaders. I'm not into followers. Then, during a 2005 appearance with the Fox 2 TV network, Six would infamously end the interview by calling the interviewer an a-hole after he was asked the question, who rocked harder in the 80s, Motley Crue or Poison? For his part, Michaels would not engage, choosing instead to keep quiet while seeming incredibly confused as to why Six would continuously trash his band. The two would later awkwardly contradict one another in a series of interviews where Michaels would first claim that Nikki Six personally apologized to him for his derogatory comments. This was then followed by Six harshly responding on Twitter, saying, Just to clarify, Brett Michaels recently said I apologized to him about derogatory comments that Motley made about Poison in the past, and that isn't what I said. What I did say was, I personally never had anything against you guys as people, but Motley just sort of thought you sucked as a band. Eventually, Poison and Motley Crue were able to put aside their differences and even recently embarked on the massive stadium tour in 2022. Hanoi Rocks guitarist Andy McCoy slammed Motley Crue bassist Nikki Six over his account of his infamous and widely publicized near-death experience via OD. In a 2022 interview with Indie Power, McCoy said, Nikki's books are full of lies. I saved the guy's life. I got him revived. And the thank you I've gotten has been nothing. And that makes him a second-class citizen in my eyes, because he only thinks about the buck. Six would fire back on Twitter, writing, Andy McCoy has been on a rant saying I never thanked him for saving my life. It's true. I also never thanked him for getting me the drugs during my deadly addiction that night. I get it. He's just trying to sell a book, an album, or club tour. McCoy had also previously criticized Motley Crue for their decision to title their box set Music to Crash Your Car To, following Motley Crue singer Vince Neil's drunken car crash that claimed the life of Hanoi Rock's drummer, Nicholas Razzle Dingley. Disrespectful is an understatement, said McCoy. The most tasteless and murderous gimmick to cash in on. Nikki Six gives new meaning to words like shallow, ignorant, and stupid. And that's our list. Did we miss anything? Let us know in the comment section below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Heavy for daily videos about your favorite rock and metal bands. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Thanks for watching Heavy, and we'll see you soon.